Hello everyone, and welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to go over everything you need to know about Arbitrum. So as you can see here, Arbitrum has been gaining a lot of traction recently. It's currently the seventh largest chain by total value locked, so it's really climbing along the ranks. It just flipped Phantom, which is quite impressive. And if you're not familiar with Arbitrum, it's a layer two scaling solution for Ethereum. What that means is that the security of Arbitrum comes from the Ethereum chain itself. So that means that it's probably a more trustworthy option as opposed to some of the more centralized proof of stake platforms or blockchains out there. Now, of course, Arbitrum is still in beta. Uh, so with that said, if you decide to bridge funds over, you're definitely going to want to be careful and make sure that you're using test amounts as opposed to your whole portfolio or position size. Now, I know a lot of folks have some trouble with bridges, so I will link the official Arbitrum bridge below. It's actually quite simple, although it isn't the most professional looking website here. You can see very simple UI, but essentially if you're on ETH mainnet, you'll have this option here to deposit ETH. All you'll do is click that to deposit. The transaction is pretty minimal as far as the gas cost goes, and then it takes about five minutes to appear on Arbitrum itself, which is quite quick. So moving on, if you're trying to see what you can actually do on Arbitrum right now, they do have a great portal where you can look at all of the apps that are currently deployed to Arbitrum and that are coming soon. So I will link this below, but you can see all of the big apps that we know and love on Ethereum mainnet or layer one are coming to Arbitrum. So you can see Aave is there, we have Anchor, Balancer, AnySwap, um, Chainlink, of course. And you can see there's a ton of different options here. And I would say, actually, if the app is popular on mainnet, it's going to be deployed on Arbitrum. So pretty much everything that can move to L2 will, which is obviously very exciting. Now, with that said, although I'm very excited about Arbitrum, at this point in time, there are very few things you can do, actually. Um, so I'm just going to switch tabs over here back to DeFi Llama. And this is going to give you a breakdown of the Arbitrum ecosystem today. So you can see there's a huge spike in TVL. And if we scroll down, we can just look at all of the platforms that have deployed and their respective TVL on layer two. Now, of course, in the DeFi ecosystem, capital follows yield. Um, so the first two projects here listed by TVL, uh, they're pretty much just pump and dumps. They're not really offering anything new to the ecosystem. But that said, I will go over the true genuine projects that are deployed on Arbitrum now and just show you a bit about how those work. Now with that out of the way, I do wanna show you what Uniswap looks like. So I did demo this in Optimism and it's pretty much equally as fast with Arbitrum. So if you wanna look at how Optimism works, I will link that in the top right. But uh, just to test it out, I did put some liquidity into the Uni ETH pool here, and it was extremely quick and extremely cheap to do so. Now, one of the reasons why I provided liquidity to this specific pair is that I want to protect myself in case there's any chance of an airdrop from either Arbitrum or Uniswap in the future just for being on L2. So in my mind, being in this Uniswap pool and providing liquidity for the Uni token itself is one of the best ways to ensure that. So if you have the availability, it's probably not a bad idea to just throw in some liquidity here because you really never know. If we switch over to the Uniswap analytics site for Arbitrum, it is quite cool to see how much liquidity has already moved over, which is about $32 million. And just to remind you with Uniswap v3, the goal is actually to have a lower amount of TVL because the AMM is so capitally efficient. So really cool to see. And there's a ton of liquidity here if you're transacting between some of the more common pairs. Now, next up is SushiSwap. And of course, SushiSwap is going to be equally as fast on Arbitrum. So I just want to get right to it and show you some of the farming opportunities since I know a lot of you are interested in that. Uh, so here I am, I just sorted them from highest APR to least. And you can see there's actually some pretty good incentivized APRs. I do expect these APRs to come down quite a bit. A lot of the reason for these ETH stablecoin APRs being so high is because people are just bridging ETH over since it's the easiest to on the Arbitrum bridge. And then they're swapping it immediately to stablecoins just to get stablecoins on layer two. So I would kind of discount that a bit, but if you see any other pairs that have a pretty strong incentive pool or reward pool there, uh, definitely check those out as well. Now, another DEX that is pretty much overlooked on mainnet, but has actually generated quite a bit of TVL on Arbitrum is Dodo. Now, what's interesting about Dodo is they have some great APRs for liquidity mining, and you can actually provide single-sided pairs. So these APRs will come down, but right now there are some pretty interesting opportunities there. So you can see just right off the bat, you can provide just ETH 
in this ETH USDC pair and get about an 8.6 APR, which is obviously great. And the USDC APR is quite high too. So I will of course link this below and definitely worth checking out. Now I know Dodo is new for quite a bit of us. It is for me. So I will link this medium post, which you can read all about the incentives and how Dodo is really positioning themselves on Arbitrum. So would definitely recommend you check that out before providing liquidity. I think they're really trying to position themselves well on layer two since they've kind of lost the mainnet fight. So it's going to be really interesting interesting to see how this plays out and I am a bit big fan of the single-sided liquidity so I think a lot of you are going to be interested in this one. Now next up we have Balancer which has come to Arbitrum. Now Balancer is a bit unique because it allows to have multiple coins in a different pool more than just two. I think you can have maybe up to a dozen or more uh, but you can see they have incentives now deployed for a couple different pools. Uh, the first is BTC ETH USDC. This is like the curve tri pool and that's getting about 20% which is phenomenal. And then they have the balancer ETH pool which is getting 40% and if you're a big fan of the balancer token perhaps that would be more attractive to you. So balancer has only incentivized a couple pools as you can see but I imagine that will change in the future so if you're watching this video at a later date definitely click the link below to see what the incentives are like when you're watching the video. So lastly I did want to cover curve. You can see Charlie Watkins actually just put this tweet out and uh, you can see curve has now deployed to arbitrum with that said rewards aren't actually out yet and the dow is actually going to be voting on that on wednesday but i do expect that incentives are going to be coming to arbitrum so definitely something you want to stay tuned for so right now you can see i'm on the curve arbitrum site and you can see there are two pools listed right now there are no rewards there's no volume liquidity hasn't come in yet but I do expect that to obviously change once Curve deploys incentives to Arbitrum. Now, if you're very engaged in DeFi, one thing you could do is you could track the vote and then you could put funds into these pools before incentives are turned on. Now, the benefit of that is as soon as the incentives start flowing, you're going to be one of the first depositors. So you're going to have an outside share of the pool at the start. Now, obviously, over a matter of hours or days or even maybe a week, your share of the pool will dilute very quickly. But you're still going to have a very high yield at the start, so definitely something to keep in mind. So now that I've covered those apps, I do want to show you something very interesting on Etherscan. If we scroll down here, I just have the top gas spenders sorted by amount spent in the last 24 hours. And what's really cool is that Arbitrum is the third largest gas spender uh, just in the last day. Now this is great because Arbitrum is just in the early innings now, but it's still spending a lot of gas. And of course, with EIP-1559, all of that value is going back to ETH holders. Now this is why we get so excited about ETH L2s. It's because all of that value accrues back to ETH and all of that security is built on ETH. I just thought this was really interesting to share. I do expect this to increase. I do expect optimism to be up there as well when it's fully deployed like Arbitrum. So something to keep in mind, and I will link this below if you want to track it yourself. So as you can see, TVL has really, of course, increased on Arbitrum, and it was only done with a handful of apps. I think this is really going to increase over the next coming weeks, and Arbitrum is just going to explode. Going back to this launch portal, I think once we see trusted money markets like Aave and Compound come online and people can essentially bridge their funds over, I think the TVL is only going to grow even more. The reason for this is people are basically going to deposit into Aave, they're going to take out a loan against their ETH or other asset that they like, and they're basically going to farm all of the incentives that we know are coming to L2. This is basically what I talked about in my Avalanche video and my my phantom video so if you're interested you can check those out as well but i expect the same things to happen with arbitrum moving back to this blockchain chart you can see that arbitrum already flipped phantom with minimal incentives whereas phantom has a large ecosystem and you can see that it could flip avalanche quite soon and polygon so I think as apps come to Arbitrum, as those incentives get there and people realize that they really don't need to be on layer one, they can just bridge all of their assets over, we're going to see uh, L2s like Arbitrum and Optimism really take off, which is really exciting. Now, this is a story that I'm going to be covering very closely over the next few weeks and months. Whenever really big projects launch on Optimism and Arbitrum, I'm going to be covering them with a video, so definitely subscribe and hit the notification bell if you haven't yet. Now, if there's anything in particular you want to see about these layer twos, please leave a comment below. I do read all of them and I will get back to you. So definitely a great resource there. Now, with that said, thank you so much for watching this video and I look forward to seeing you all in the next one.